Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm Katherine Noderk, Senior Director of Community Engagement at the ALS Association of Texas. Today, we are joined by Lori Tyler um, to explore assistive technology options. Um, before we get started, I wanted to give you a quick overview of the Zoom platform. If you're on a computer, you should see three or four photos lined up at the right of your screen. Um, if you move your cursor over the boxes, on the top of those three boxes, you'll see a dash, um, a box, two boxes, and a grid. You want to click on the single box. If you hover over it, you'll see um, it'll say something like view active speaker view. That's the one you want to use because it'll condense everything to just the person that's talking and then you won't be distracted by everybody else's videos. Um, so that's really the best view so you can see the speaker and then also everything that's being um, presented on the screen. If you're joining from a tablet or phone, this should already be set and you don't need to do anything. From any device, you should be able to move your cursor or tap your screen and you'll see a few options pop up. Um, on the bottom left of your screen, or in some cases on the top of your screen, you'll see a microphone. That's how you can mute or unmute yourself. I will be muting everyone momentarily so that Lori can go through her presentation. We won't have to worry about any background noise. If you have any questions during the presentation, you can put them in the chat box. If you're on the computer, it should be on the bottom labeled chat. It looks like a little speech bubble. Um, on a tablet, it's actually nested under more. And on your phone, it's on the bottom um, under participants. And I'm gonna go ahead and type something in the chat box real quick so y'all can all see um, where it is. This is your chat box. So you should get a little notification that pops up and that will help you um, find your chat box. Um, again, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box and I'll read them out to Lori and we can answer them during the presentation. And then at the end, um, I'll unmute everyone and we'll open it up for questions. We will be recording this presentation and we'll send it out to everyone afterwards using the email address that you provided when you registered. Thank you again for joining us today. I'm gonna to go ahead and mute everybody and invite Lori to go ahead and get started and talk to us about our assistive technology options. Thank you so much, Lori. Thank you, Catherine, for having me and for putting this uh, presentation together. I think it's so vital during this time just that we stay connected. Um, I know here in San Antonio, we are um, doing phone conferences with our patients. So we're not even you know, coming to clinic. And so we miss everyone. And I'm just so thrilled that um, so many of you are interested in communication. And um, I just kind of wanted to go through kind of my role as a speech pathologist I'm on the ALS team um, at the UT Health Science Center here in San Antonio, kind of what I do and um, answer any questions you guys may have. I know communication is, um, there's a lot of, of information um, out there and especially about augmentative communication, speech devices and, and apps and, and voice banking and boogie boards. So I just kind of want to go over all of that and just give you, chance, give you a chance to, to uh, ask questions. So um, kind of my role, this first slide, I, I love it because it really just kind of goes through and talks about what um, we do as speech therapists and um, hopefully you guys are being followed by a speech therapist um, and already connected to a clinic so that you can um, take what I've given you today and, and feel free to ask questions and explore with your therapist a little bit further um, and, and talk to them about what your needs are but first of all you know just my role is really to evaluate and treat speech and swallowing um, in, in the ALS population and really along the whole spectrum. So as that disease progresses, um, we're there for you to help you with any communication changes and needs. It's, it's an ongoing assessment. It's not, um, I tell you one thing in January and three months later, I'm gonna tell you the same thing um, because this disease progresses as you know that. And so things do change. Um, and really, you know, educating not just the patients, but um, I spent a big part of my um, time in clinic educating the family, the caregivers, um, friends who come in, and they're the ones that are helping you know, the patients and, and really walking alongside them through all of that. So um, constantly um, trial and error and, and changing things up, um, providing tools to support communication. Um, we're not talking about swallowing today, but that's another um, area that I, that I cover. Um, as well. So, um, Catherine, this next slide, I, I love this slide. I, I found it a few years ago, and I really think it just um, is a great representation that, you know, you have a lot to say, um, but sometimes that communication is difficult. And so um, we just want to, you know, be there for you and support you. Um, everyone is different. You know, not everyone with ALS experiences the exact same thing. Um, 
these are some percentages that I thought maybe would be helpful for you. And like Catherine said, she will be sending this presentation out. So don't feel like you have to memorize it right now. Uh, we'll get that to you. But 93% of people um, will lose their speech. Those with bulbar ALS, um, swallowing 86%. There's those tongue fasciculations, that twitching that, you know, sometimes people get all over their body, but it does um, occur in the tongue as well. And then 19% will have that vocal cord um, spasm where the, the vocal cords are, are shifting as well. So um, everyone's different. Not everyone experiences the same thing. Here's some other statistics of, of speech problems. Um, and this is just, again, um, some research that's, that's been done. You know, regardless of, you know, the onset of the site, um, most people will have trouble communicating. So that's why this, this presentation, I think, today is so, is so vital. So let's talk a little bit about different types of AAC. Um, let's kind of go through those, and then I've got some uh, samples of those here so that you can take a look at it and, and see what I'm talking about. So first of all, we, we, the first step is called no tech, and that's basically where you don't need anything. You can point, you can gesture, you can sign, and I have family members uh, who crack me up because the patients get their message across one way or the other, um, you know, whether it's through a head nod or um, pointing or, or a, a vocalization, um, but they are, they're very good about getting their, their needs met. Um, the second step is called rapid ex access communication. We previously called it low tech. And these are just uh, methods and systems that don't require any um, batteries. Think of it that way. Um, and let's go through, can you pull up that one slide? I think it's the next one. And then we'll jump back to the high tech. Um, so this is um, communication boards, um, you know, point, uh, screens where the, the person's looking at it and the other person's on the other side. Um, a lot of times these, these low tech options are um, really what are most used. Um, mm -hmm. if, if they can't, if they don't have a speech uh, device and, you know, it's the middle of the night and they need to go to the toilet, they're not going to try to plug their device in, get calibrated and, and all of that. They're going to just grab the communication board or they're going to use the, the pointer, um, you know, and, and use that. Uh, it's, 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 just, it's quick and it's simple. Batteries aren't required and, and, you know, people can have several different boards laying around the, around the house. Um, so going back to high tech, that would be um, your speech devices, those are that produce the digitized, synthesized um, uh, systems, okay? So I'm going to show you, I'll pull this up close. Let's jump into, this is, can y'all see that? This is one of the apps um, that I recommend for Apple users. And we'll have a list posted a little bit later, but basically you type what you want to say, you hit speak and it speaks it for you. So nice to see you. So there's that synthesized voice, um, either male or female, and there's hundreds of different apps. And so I've just given you a list here at the end of the presentation that you can um, most are free, some are 99 cents, $1.99, um, that you can put on any tablet or phone. And, and you know, um, it's easy to use, it's quick. Um, we're used to hearing that, that computerized voice with Siri and everything else. So it's very mainstream. Um, the iPad or the tablet or the phone is light. You put it in your purse and you can carry it around. Um, this does not have, obviously, eye gaze capability. You would still need to be able to touch and type. Um, and a lot of them are word predicting. So if you've used a phrase a lot, like this phrase. Hi, my name is Lori. I've said that so much that in the word prediction box here, the words pop up. Um, there are several different. This is another good one I like. I'm highlighting these two because these are two that I really recommend quite a bit. Uh, this gives you a list of phrases on one side categories on the other. So everything is just written out. You don't have to type the phrase every single time. Um, you have favorites that you do. You hit it one time. Thank you. So with one touch, you can say a whole phrase. So those are two. That's a, uh, that first one was verbally. The second one was Clerocom. Um, but again, you know, this is Apple, but there's just as many for Android users as well. So um, Catherine, do we have any questions right now that do I need to stop and touch on related to what I've said? Um, so 
let's see, let me check the chat box. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to um, put it in at this time. Um, I think when you were talking about the statistics around um, speech loss, uh, mm -hmm. Adam said opposite for men, especially husbands. Um, a couple questions actually here. Um, high tech apps for those without use of hands. Right. So we'll, that's a, that that's my next my next demo. Okay. So, yeah. And then um, Walter asked if we could repeat um, the names of the Apple apps, and we're actually going to list those um, in a, just a few minutes on a sure. slide. So yeah, we'll, we'll have, have all them. of them listed there, and we'll send this to you afterwards as well. Right, right. And let me just show briefly, most of you are familiar with the boogie board. You have a stylus, and it's just an LED screen that you can write on, and then you just push the button, and it erases. These are about 10, 15 bucks on Amazon. So I have several, um, even that I give out to patients in clinic, um, if they still have capability to use their hands, this is very lightweight and easy to use versus some, you know, and some people prefer to write. They, they want to go low tech all the way. They're not interested in the higher tech speech devices or speech apps. Um, and if you can still write, you know, this is a great option and put it in your purse or backpack and uh, just easy to use. You can push the button erases your message so that versus a, a notebook where everyone can go back and read what you've been what you've been saying for the last few months. So that's, that's kind of nice too. So here is an eye gaze system. And I know the glare is bad, so I'm gonna pull my computer up to it, okay? This is just one company's device. There are several different companies out there and you will visit with your speech therapist to try to find the best fit um, for you you and what is most appropriate for you and what your needs are so but but know that they all basically work about the same I'm not able to, to use the eye gaze camera down here but you can see the camera sorry right here um, at the bottom and that picks up your eyes and your eyes become the mouse that you use around the screen you can either use a dwell selection where you look and stare at it for a certain amount of time to activate it or you can use blink you look at what you want to talk about, you blink your eyes and it activates, okay? Um, these are probably about eight pounds. It comes on a big mount. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's kind of there. And the base is, 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 you know, bigger. So this is not something that you're gonna put in a backpack and carry around. This is something used at the home uh, with your family, with caregivers. And um, it's wonderful because it's got, like I said, the eye gaze, it's got different options. Hello. Lori, can you hold Hello. on one second? Um, Absolutely. Everyone is asking if we can make your screen larger. So let me make sure that I can sure. do that. One second. I'm stopping the share and then you should all be able to see Lori's screen larger. Can you all see that now? I see you large, Catherine, on my screen, but maybe okay. I don't see my own face. Now Lori is larger. Perfect, thank you. And Lori, just let me know when I need to go back to the slides and we'll, we'll switch okay. back and forth. Yeah, I was just gonna finish up with the eye gaze. So are you good? Okay, so everybody can see me? Okay, so I'm gonna switch back to, this is the eye gaze system that I was talking about. So you have phrases, you have a keyboard for spontaneous speech, you're basically just typing what you wanna say either with your finger or with your eyes. It's loud. H. Whoops, sorry. Hey. Okay. Um, what people enjoy about an eye gaze system is it also is a computer. I mean, it is a computer. Um, so you can use it just like you would your computer. You can Skype, you can FaceTime, you can get on the internet, um, you can pay bills. You know, so those that don't have capability to text, type, or write, they are able to use this with their eyes. Um, so there's lots of different pages you can go to. And like I said, each company's device is a little bit different, but basically they work about the same where you're controlling the mouse with your eyes and able to communicate um, over the phone, in person, whatever it may be. So that's just a quick glance at one company's speech device. All right, Catherine, so let's, can I answer some questions about the device? If you have any questions, please feel free to put those in the chat box. 
what's the cost? Yes. So as a Texas resident, the cost is zero for you. Um, the state has a program that uh, we pay a tax on our phone bill that helps fund speech generating devices. So as a Texas resident, as long as you can prove that you live here, um, the device I showed you plus the amount is covered at 100%. So there is no out of pocket cost for you. However, and I say this with every single thing I recommend, um, you start the process sooner rather than later. Um, with the state, it's about a three to four month wait time. So if you think you're interested in it, speak with your speech therapist and look at a few different devices and demo the devices and play around with them and see which one is a good fit for you. Um, and then, you know, move forward in that in that application process because it does take time and, you know, you may need it tomorrow, but it just, it, it, there is, there is a wait time. Um, however, there is no cost sometimes. And you can also go through your, through your private insurance as well. Um, and there may be a copay unless you have a secondary insurance, but um, with STAP, there is no cost for it. Yeah, great question. Yeah, Medicare, yes, Medicare does cover the device. Okay. Any other questions before we move on? You can go ahead and put up, um, Catherine, the high tech AAC. Um, we have one more question. Is there a certain website to go to for this? I would really, I would probably go straight to your speech therapist um, and get her advice. The way I do it, I start with demoing a couple of different companies and I kind of know what each device does and that that kind of you know dictates which device I'm going to recommend first um, so I definitely would speak to your speech therapist but you can you can google you know speech generating devices and look at the different companies devices and see which one you know um, and read about each one but I would that's a conversation you're going to need to have with your speech therapist because it does require whether you go through Medicare, private insurance, or the state, you do have to have a full speech um, and language evaluation completed by your speech therapist. That's um, that's required for for any any company. So um, this is just the the slide that kind of talks a little bit about what we just covered with the high tech um, electronic. Those are some pictures of different companies. Um, yeah. Yeah. So here is the slide with the apps. Um, I showed you today verbally in Clerocom number one and number five underneath Apple. Um, there are just as many for Android users. Um, on the bottom there, I showed you the boogie board. Again, you can find those on Amazon for um, $10, $15. There's also apps on Android and Apple called whiteboard. Same thing. You use your finger or a stylus to write on the screen. So these are just um, a great way to, if you still have use of your hands and you can, you can type or text and sometimes even though it's difficult, you're able to you know, hold, hold the stylus and, and type and out the words there. So these are some of my favorites, but again, speak to your speech therapist, Google, you know, speech apps for Android or speech apps for Apple and hundreds of different ones will, will pop up. And I recommend downloading two or three on each of your devices and play around and see which one works best for you. So there's nothing wrong with, with having several. Lori, we have a quick question. Can you be able to record your own voice while you're still able to talk? Yeah, so that's voice banking. If you'll just slide down, um, Catherine, to the last slide. Um, yeah, keep going right there. So that first and second, um, Amy Roman is a speech therapist and she puts a lot of information out there, current on everything. Um, technology changes a lot, so it's sometimes challenging to keep up with all the changes, but these are two great websites. And that second one uh, really gives a good explanation of what message banking and what voice banking is. And I think your the previous question was about voice banking. So the software that's most used is called Model Talker. And it's a software that you can download on your computer. Uh, and with a good quality headset in a quiet room where there's no background noise, you go through and you record your voice, um, you, you, you say phrases, 
the, the downside of this program is that there's about 12 to 1300 phrases um, that you have to record. So it's very lengthy. Again, starting it sooner rather than later when your voice is strong and clear, that's the time to do it. Um, so it picks up and records your voice and intonation and pitch. And then once that program is complete, you download that onto a flash drive. And then that flash drive is used on your speech generating device. So then when I hit, hello, how are you? It's gonna have my voice. Um, it's still synthesized. I mean, there's still that computer sound, but you can definitely tell it's your own voice. So um, yeah, that's called voice banking, but check out that website. It really gives a good um, explanation of what that is, so. Um, we have another question. Do any of the speech device software do any of those have the ability to record a person's voice? Okay, so on not your whole voice to where the everything I push would have your voice, but it does have a record button. So if you want to say, hey, honey, how was your day? Or what's for dinner? You can record your voice saying those separate phrases. So you only have a select few that you've chosen to record in your voice. Um, so not, not everything will be in your voice, only those phrases that you've recorded. Does that make sense? And then I lost you. another question, um, how does voice banking differ from message banking? Yeah, so message banking is used. Um, can I pull that? Can we pull that um, website up, Catherine, for them to look at it on your screen or no? The second one, I'm sorry. Okay. So message banking is you um, have a recorder that you're recording your favorite phrases that you say throughout the day. If you always, yeah, let's see. I'll let you work on that while I kind of talk it through. Oh yeah, there we go. So, okay. So right there, Matt, go scroll down. Okay. So that really goes through and tells you, but basically message banking, um, you have, there you go. Okay, um, you have a recorder that you are recording your laughter or your words of affection or things that you say most often and working with your family and your caregiver and your speech therapist with coming up with a list of things that you say most often, you're recording those messages and those messages can then be uploaded onto your speech generating device. Whereas voice banking is, it's, it's banking your, your intonation, the pitch, your syllables, your consonants, all of what you say that will then be uploaded onto your speech device so that everything you push on your speech device will be in your voice. Does that make sense? Perfect. I got a for thumbs up from Walter. Good. <laughs> I'm glad Catherine's navigating this and I'm not. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Any other questions about high tech, low tech? We're good. Okay. So let's go. Yeah. So those are the apps. Let's, yeah. Let's talk about compensatory strategies. So all of these devices and whoops yeah um and apps and boogie boards are wonderful um but i also like to mention um these these compensatory strategies these are ways that can help others understand you and these kind of seem like common sense um but a lot of times we just we're in conversation at the house and we just don't we don't think about it so um over articulating that's really opening the mouth and trying to slow down uh, reduce the rate of how you would normally speak because in ALS you know lips tongue cheeks are all um, getting weaker and so you may not be able to speak with the same rate that you've spoken before your words will run together or you'll become slurred um, sounding so really slowing down over articulating 
um, make sure you're, you have you know, eye contact with who you're talking to. If you're in one room and the person's in the other room, they're not gonna be able to see your face and they're probably not gonna hear you or understand you. They're gonna ask you to repeat yourself. Maybe you repeat yourself you know, two or three times and by that point, you're just like, just forget it, Never mind. Don't worry about it. So um, it becomes frustrating for you as a speaker as well as the listener. Um, think about turning off background noise. If you've got the TV, you know, on mute it if you want to say something. Um, come in the same room face to face. A lot of times it's easier as a caregiver to say, I heard you say you want a, and then letting the patient give you one word versus having the patient repeat the whole sentence again because we're really trying to conserve breath, conserve energy, conserve you know, muscle strength. And so the more they have to repeat themselves, uh, the more fatigued that they become. So um, that's just one way for you to kind of help them out. Um, at the bottom there, I mean, we want to understand and, and communicate with you. We value what you're saying. Um, and so that's why this is a great presentation because I'm, I'm show, showing you different ways to communicate if verbally, you know, if talking verbally is becomes a challenge. So these are just some myths and, and misunderstandings. I think that um, I have people come in and talk with me about it. So that's something that I go over with them. Um, I, ha I have a lot of patients that come in from different areas um, who are working with maybe a home health speech therapist and they're being prescribed oral motor exercises. Um, you know, which is a, a traditional method of therapy that we use with, say, a stroke patient or head injured patient, someone like that. But with ALS, it really is contraindicated. Research shows that it really weakens and, and um, makes the muscles and the strength decline even quicker. So those are not recommended um, to continue those high rep speech um, oral motor exercises. So. And then this last um, slide really just talks about tips and, and ways that you can kind of help out um, as a caregiver. So um, speaking you know, loudly, reducing external distractions, um, you know, having that direct communication, keeping things simple, maybe establishing a yes, no response. It's easier as a caregiver to create a yes, no, or ask a yes, no question than it is to say, um, you know, what would you like for breakfast today? Instead of, do you want waffles? Yes or no. Do you want oatmeal? Yes or no. So trying to reduce the amount of how much um, the patient needs to, needs to speak and, and talk. So any questions on those last few slides that I covered? Show them out. Um, we have one question. Um, what about Apple's new accessible software voice, Contro? Contro, huh. Tell me again, read that for me again. Uh, what about Apple's new accessible software, voice Contro? Oh, voice control, excuse me. Oh, I was like, gosh, that's an app I've not heard of before. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, not, I'm not real sure. Um, that may be something I have to look up. I'm not real sure who, who asked that. What? Um, William and uh, Adam seems familiar with it too. Okay. I'm not real sure about, uh, I'm not real sure. Just voice control. Are you talking about like um, Alexis or Google, things like that? It, it might be, it seems like. Okay. Um, I have another question, um, sort of like Alexa voice input to the device. Oh, it's sort of like Alexa's right. voice input to the device. Okay. Right. Um, Alberto, so, he uses it. I'm actually going to go ahead and, um, Lori, do you want me to just go yeah. ahead and open it up and yeah. unmute everybody? Yeah, that's fine. Sure. I'm going to unmute everyone. I'm going to go ahead and um, read these though. Um, it's sort of like Alexa voice input to the device. Um, voice control is very sophisticated speech to text. Um, I do have a question from Timothy saying, should I reduce my talking or is talking good exercise? Yeah, so the amount of talking and the amount of eating and swallowing. Okay. 
do throughout the day um, it is enough that is enough exercise I'm not going to tell you don't talk all day long but I'm definitely going to tell you to um, conserve your voice if you know and be yeah. mindful of when you're going to be speaking so if you know that you are going to a doctor's appointment and you're going to be talking a lot don't get on the phone an hour ahead and, and talk for 30 minutes and kind of wear yourself out. Um, if you know that your voice is stronger and your breath is stronger earlier in the morning, <coughs> schedule earlier appointments, schedule a breakfast meeting versus an evening meeting, you know, a dinner out. Um, keeping, you know, when guests come over or family and friends want to visit, maybe in the past you'd sit for two hours and talk and that's normal for you. But now two hours, you know, you're exhausted. So thinking about and being mindful about when you're going to use your voice and trying to um, plan ahead and conserve. And then maybe, you know, um, taking a rest after you're done with that conversation. Maybe get on the computer, read a book, watch TV for 30 minutes where you're able to uh, rest up. Um, everyone you. should be unmuted now, so if you have a question, um, feel free to ask, and if you need to um, mute yourself again, then um, you can absolutely do so as well. I cannot. You want to talk? I have a question. Hey, Albert. Hey, Albert. Hey, um, I, I, I work from home, uh, obviously using my computer, and one of the things that I have been looking for is a way to answer, just answer a phone call without using the hand. Like, like, of course, you can see I can speak uh, quite clearly, but I, uh, I don't, I can't use my hands anymore. And, um, I I have been trying to find a way to just answer a call without using the hands. Hmm. And I've, I actually found a, uh, one, uh, but it's, it's uh, only available for Android. And I, I my company uh, gave me a, a, an iPhone, so I, I have to stick with that one. So um, is, do you know any um, application that I just can't? Is we answer a phone call from uh, um, the phone, let's say the phone is either dormant or um, the, the, the screen off, and that I can actually answer, just answer a phone call. Do you have Do you have a speech device? No, I, I, as I as you see, I I speak uh, normally. I have an eye gaze. Um, you have an eye, You do have an eye gaze. For controlling the computer, actually, mm -hmm. it's another story because. Uh, you explain, uh, you show this uh, I guess devices that are. Um, um, Is that with the only with the starting with the by themselves, right? Um, the one I have is called, uh, it's a, a Toby product, it's a called right. PCI uh, Plus, which is basically like a little ruler that stays in front of my computer. That is it, just the eye gazing device itself. Uh, and it uh, uh, runs a computer, that's, um, runs a program yeah. called Windows Control. So I control Windows. Yeah. Can, you compare that, can you compare that with your phone, Alberto? No, I, I run, that, that is a, a separate uh, device from Toby. Okay. So, so um, with the iGay system, the speech device, um, you can <laughs> pair your telephone with it. So, um, that would be one way is if you have the, the eye gaze system through, and Toby can come out and maybe work with you on that to, to help you answer it through voice, you know, uh, a voice command to, to answer the phone. Yeah, and that, I know, that you know, is that's, uh, that's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, something that to make it a have, right, I talked to them, but I, I haven't tried any option using the, the, the eye gaze. I, I tried to use just the phone by itself Right. Uh, because sometimes the the call comes when the like say or, or late in the night when I have it already uh, off, I, I I just can't answer. I just uh, yeah. I will call. Oh. I have a colleague who's um, uh, pretty savvy with environmental controls and different apps. So I will call her today and ask if there is an app or some <laughs> way to answer the phone. Not with that, without eye gaze. So if you have your, your system off, that we can still 
Um, Alberta Lynn has a suggestion here. Mm -hmm. She says Apple lets you answer the phone by saying mm -hmm. Siri. Um, and I think you have to have that enabled in your settings on your Yeah, I, I have it enabled, but uh, for some reason, sometimes it uh, it wakes up the phone. Sometimes it does not wake up the phone. I, I don't know what it is the, the problem. Uh, and I, I heard that uh, from other other people. Try. Hi. Hi there. Hello? Do you have a question? Hi, what's your question? Uh, okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I, I, um, just, just before I go, um, I have been using um, Apple's uh, voice control. Um, uh, be careful because there are two in Apple in the uh, uh, iOS program. Uh, one is called voice control. That's what you want to use. And the one is called the other one is voice over, which is something I think more for visual impaired people. Uh, basically, the thing start talking whatever is in the on the screen and it's hard to stop once it starts. So don't try this voice over, try the voice control. Okay, that's my strong suggestion because I, I did that and almost locked on us, the, 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 the phone, using the voice over. The voice over is it's a nightmare. Hello? Hi, this is Bill. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. Uh, listen, I've been using uh, voice control now for about a month and a half, two months. Uh, along with Siri, I, I can open my phone with Siri, uh, and then I can use the voice control to navigate once it's open. Um, it, it's been seamless. It, it, you know, there's always a little difficulty, but I've been able to use voice control on my computer. It assigns numbers to everything that you would tap on. And um, this sophisticated program was just written by Apple in the last year. So your iOS or your Apple's software, your OS, has to be up to date, but it's pretty amazing. Apple also has uh, an accessory uh, uh, support group that you can call and always get into, and they'll help you through this. And um, like I said, I even navigate my television with uh, voice control. Um, you know, it's a, no. my, so this, this has been really helpful because I can't use my hands, uh, but I can use my voice. So mm -hmm. I That's to great. suggest people take a good look at it. Yeah. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Catherine, how are we doing on the questions? Um, I'm not really seeing any more questions. Uh, oh, wait, here's a couple. Um, let's see. Uh, Adam Dobbert has suggested maybe using your communication device that might provide a consistent voice to theory. Um, and uh, Lynn is asking for an Apple support number. I think you could probably um, Google that, Lynn, or sometimes you actually include it in your contact, an Apple support number at the top of your contacts, I seem to recall. Um, and then... Uh, she was asking if Howard, if you could, uh, Bill, I'm not sure who was thinking, um, could share that information. If you want to put it in the chat, I'm sure that would be really helpful for accessory support. The Apple voice control? Yes. Uh, hello? Hi, do you have a question? Uh, no, no. I, I, you were, somebody was asking if I could share the information. Message. Oh, yes. Um, Lynn was asking if there was any information you could share about um, accessory support for Apple products. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, at this time, right now? Um, or, if you want to send it to us afterwards, that's fine, too, and we can send it out in our follow-up email. Or if you want to put it in the chat, either way. 
yeah, that'll be fine. I'll, I'll uh, be happy to, uh, if you have to share if anybody wants to know, uh, because it's, it's been a, a big aid for me. Uh, oh, I think Chloe just put something in there too for just a general support link, but I'm not sure if that's different than what you were talking about. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Mm. All right. Um, let's see here. One thing pop up in the chat here. Um, from Dutch, Google is working on enhanced voice recognition of people who have impaired speech. It's called Project Euphonium. Yes. And the Apple Care team. Let's see. And then Chloe says, Lynn, you can also go to this website and click on which device you need help with, and they can connect you to a representative. The Apple Care team is always very helpful. Yeah. There's some good information in here. Yeah, lots of support. That's awesome. See, you guys are smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last call for questions. Hey. That, that's me again. Um, Paulette is going to laugh at me now. But um, I, I have a question. Um, um, a, I'm a singer. I sing in, uh, in choir. And, um, I think it has helped me keeping my voice and the, the breathing. So, well, the breathing, the, the doctors say, say, they say it very likely has uh, helped me. Um, I wonder. I wonder if you know any um, research on 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 this. How much um, keep singing? Or once I heard of, about um, a person that was uh, an actor or an actress that um, had to to speak loud, um, and she do she had to do special um, I'll not call exercises, but special techniques to 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 protect the voice, things like this. So I, I wonder if you have any um, research supporting this or it's just my my case, yeah, my feeling. I, yeah, I love that you're um, in choir and you enjoy singing. And so, um, you know, again, remembering that the diaphragm is also a muscle. And so we use that diaphragm to pull air in and out. Um, so if, if, you're, if you wanna sing, you know, for 30 minutes straight, um, mm. by all means, go for it. So I would be, I'd be curious to see kind of how your speech is and how you feel after choir practice or after a performance. So just, you know, maybe check in with yourself and, and see kind of how you feel energy wise, breath support wise, speech wise, you know, after singing, um, again, rest up ahead of time, rest up afterwards, you know, um, but as far as exercises, as far as diaphragmatic exercises, those are not recommended uh, because again, the diaphragm is a muscle. We don't want to overexert it or um, cause it to, you know, decline quicker. So, but that's great. Yeah. It's a, I, I try not to overdo it. Right. That's the bottom line. Is, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think the, you have to realize in, in any other muscle use <laughs> ALS, right. you have to try to figure out when it's a time to stop. Exactly. If you, yeah, if you, you know, um, feel, you know, the getting dressed and putting your shoes on and doing all of the ADLs by yourself, but afterwards you, you're, you're done for two hours and you can't go visit with a friend or do something you really want to do, you know, it, it's find that fine line of conservation um, what's too much and what's just just right for you. So, uh, and that's going to be different for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Um, just the, my uh, curiosity was uh, about uh, any uh, uh, research that you have heard about, because obviously you have been more aware of what's going on. Right. And the only research again out there is just that the diaphragm, diaphragm is a muscle and it does fatigue just like any other muscle of the body. Um, so just being careful and trying to conserve. Um, and that exercises are not indicated in ALS. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Alberto. Alberto, um, this is Rebecca, and I I like to sing a lot too. But it's been very important to our family, and um, I think that's when I first started noticing my cursive speaking because I I couldn't. Breathing 
right. Like at church, um, the song seems I couldn't keep up with the words. Right. So for me, uh, that's when I first started noticing my speech. Um, um, but at the same time, I almost feel like when I get a little nervous or excited, my speech is diminished as well. Absolutely. So I don't know if the emotion of singing um, uh, sometimes encourages me or sometimes my diaphragm gets <laughs> weaker because of it. But I tried singing more. I thought, well, I just have to keep singing to strengthen it, but it really didn't. So that was my experience. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. How are you? <laughs> okay, how are you? Are you keeping up keeping up with your studies? <laughs> That's why we mute. <laughs> Love it. All right, Catherine. All right. Um, we have one more comment from um, Howard, thank you for sharing this and reminding this, us of this. Um, Team Gleason actually has grants for device co-pays. So if for some reason you do have a co-pay for your device, um, you can apply if you need assistance. That's correct. Yes, that's correct. Um, and I believe um, here at the ALS Association, we do have some devices in our equipment loan bank. So if there's something that you want to try out before you decide what you get, um, reach out to your local care services manager and see if there's anything um, that we can get. Um, we're not um, sending out equipment, uh, loaner equipment right now, just to keep our patients safe with all of the recent events. Um, but in the future, if that's something you're considering, then always feel free to reach out to your care services manager um, or to your speech therapist and talk about your options. Absolutely. And some companies will, will uh, <laughs> lend you one to try out as well. So that's <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Dutch also said anxiety adversely impacted his voice quality as well. Absolutely. So, all right. Do we have any more questions? Uh, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to say, Catherine and Lori, thank you so much for all your research. Um, I had a speech therapist come to my house to work with me, and she had never worked with ALS. <laughs> and had all kinds of exercises she wanted me to do. But fortunately, my sister was there who is a speech pathologist. Oh, cool. She really had to this lady that these exercises were not good. So I appreciate y'all being informed for us because we are kind of different than most. Yeah that um, speech therapists have to work with. So thank you. Yeah, and, and to your point, Rebecca, you know, I was in the field, I've been in the field 23 years, um, and they say that speech therapists will probably never see an ALS patient in their entire career. So because I see eight to 10 every week, I feel like, oh, well, you know, they should know what they're doing, but they really don't. They, they try, so I do my best to educate across the state um, my, I give my personal cell phone out to people and say, you know, when that home health therapist comes over and she has questions, please call her. And so, I, you know, we do our best to educate and inform those other, you know, colleagues who, you know, have never even seen ALS before and they go straight to the traditional therapies they're used to doing with other types of patients. So, yeah, it's a, it's a challenge, but. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. Rebecca, I have a question. Um, did you have, or do, or do you know, had limb onset or bulbar? It's limb onset. Started okay. with my left leg and kind of moved up. Okay, thank you. I appreciate the information. Yeah. All right, Catherine. Uh, Randy, um, Randy, did you have a question? I'm sorry, I might have missed that. Uh, yes, I did. I sent it to you. I didn't know I could send it private or to everyone. Oh. But, uh, m my wife does have the eye gaze at home. So far, we haven't set it up or had the need to use it. But with the current circumstances, if and when it was needed. If you're talking about eye gaze, why don't you hear something? Would it require a visit or is it something that somebody could help me pair it up and set it with computer and phone uh, via 
uh, network <laughs> like we're doing. And that's, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, Rena, um, a lot of the companies right now are able to get onto your device remotely. Like the device I showed you earlier, um, that representative can actually dial in and remotely help you navigate. They are, they're able to see what you're seeing on your screen. So that's what we're doing with a lot of our patients is just doing remote um, support. So I'm not sure if that's an option. If you could get in contact with the rep that delivered your device and, and tell them that you need some help and, and what, what, you know, what can they do remotely um, at this time. <clears throat> Oh, well, that's great. I forgot about remote access. Thank you for answering. Hey, Randy, it's Jennifer. Um, I can help you with that after this call, okay? Uh, well, I don't think we're quite ready for it, but just depending <laughs> on how long this shelter at home lasts. Uh, I can just give you the contact information so you'll have it for you. I'll email it to you. Does someone else have a question? <laughs> oh, sorry, here's one from Lynn. Regarding stress, are mindfulness and relaxation by breathing apps like Stop, Breathe, and Think um, contraindicated? I haven't used those apps before. I don't really think that you're going to get the high repetition that it is. Uh, it affects the, the breathing. If it's just, you know, if you press in and out, I think that's perfectly fine. Talking more about the high, you know, three sets of 10, three sets of 15, where you sit there, you know, for 30 minutes doing those exercises. Um, so I, I feel like there's uh, mindfulness, stress relief type of breathing is, is probably okay. Yeah. Any more questions? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Lori, for um, giving this presentation and imparting your expertise on us. Um, we will be sending out this recording afterwards um, for those of you who may have joined us late, um, along with the presentation slides. Um, and I hope you please will join us for, can you still see my, see my screen? It just went out. Um, I hope y'all will join us for some of our future events. Um, go ahead and stop sharing. There we go. I hope you'll join us for some of our future events. Um, if you go to ALSTexas.org backslash virtual events, um, you'll be able to see some of our future events that are coming up. We are adding to these on a very regular basis. So we have um, a presentation next week for controlled bionics, speech generating devices. There you go. Um, That's perfect. Join us for that. And then um, we have more um, things planned in the future. If you haven't already joined, we are doing our um, uh, support groups virtually as well. And all of those are listed there with a registration link. Um, and uh, Lynn, you can find our prior recorded events on that page. If you go to alstexas.org backslash virtual events, we are listing all of our prior recorded events at the bottom of that page. There's a link and you can go to that um, recording of the event. So. Thank you so much, everyone, again. You guys have a great rest of your day and stay safe.